Hi, everyone. I spoke to Mr. Michaud. He said you had a good class today. Thanks for that. I'm sorry I missed it, uh, but it sounds like you guys have started to wrap your arms around elasticity. Tonight, we are going to tackle the interpretation of price elasticity of demand. I say tackle it because this is starting to get a little bit meaty. There are three things we want to cover tonight. The first is a more detailed examination of elastic versus inelastic demand. Not just what is it, but how do we use it in practical economic applications. The second is to talk about elasticity and total revenue, the relationship between those two ideas. And then the third is changes in elasticity along a demand curve. This is a very important point for us to get our heads around that elasticity actually changes as you move up and down a demand curve, even one that is straight. Let's jump right in. First of all, let's deal with extremes. When we're talking about sort of definition and interpretation, let's go to extremes to start to sort of understand where the two ends are. The first on your left-hand side here is perfect inelasticity. Perfect inelasticity means that the quantity demanded is 0% sensitive to changes in price. No matter the price, the quantity demanded won't change. The best example I can think of this is the demand for insulin. So my wife happens to be an insulin dependent diabetic and she needs a certain amount of insulin every single day. But I can guarantee you that regardless of the price of insulin, we are going to demand a certain amount of that product. Let's move to the other side where demand is perfectly elastic. So remember, elasticity is a measure of, a measure of sensitivity to change in price. Well, here's an example where you have a product and the book used pink tennis balls. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad example, but I don't have a better one. That at a certain price, this one is $5, there will be unlimited demand for that product. But above that price, because quantity is 100% sensitive to changes in the price, above that price, even a, a penny, the demand immediately goes to zero. Conversely, a move in price, even a penny below, drives the demand to an infinite number. So effectively, there's only one price at which there is any quantity demanded here that can be defined short of infinite demand. Now, do you really have cases where either of these happens? In all practical senses, no, but it helps when we're talking about price elasticity and the changes in elasticity and their impact on demand to look at the extremes to make sure we can understand what's going on. Okay, let's talk about uh, definitions, elastic, inelastic, and unit elastic. This is a bit of a review from today's class and from last night's video, but I think it's worth repeating here. Remember, if price elasticity of demand is greater than one, then the demand is elastic, highly sensitive to, that means change in quantity, highly sensitive to change in price. If price elasticity of demand is equal to one, then it's unit elastic. If price elasticity of demand is less than one, then demand is inelastic. Quantity demanded is relatively insensitive to changes in price. Okay, let's apply some of this and talk about an example from last night, the orange juice market. So remember that elasticity is calculated by looking at the change, percentage change in quantity over percentage change in price. Well, let's look at three different cases here. In all three cases, we have percent change in price of 15%. We then have three different percent changes in quantity. In the first case, 20% change in quantity, the second case 15, third case 10. Well, in the first case, if you have a 15% change in price and a 20% change in quantity, again, elasticity being derived by dividing percent change in quantity over percent change in price, 20 over 15 in this case, you get an elasticity of 1.33. Well, that's greater than 1, 1.33 greater than 1, so demand is elastic. Similarly here, and I won't go through all these calculations, you can just pause to look at it, we get elasticities of 1, 15 divided by 15, and an elasticity of 0.7. So according to our definitions here, unit elasticity, 1, and inelasticity when the elasticity is less than 1. Okay, so now we have an understanding of how to calculate elasticity. Is it elastic, is it unit elastic, or is it inelastic? Why do we care? Well, 
One of the first things we'll look at and learn how to do is help predict the impact on total revenue of a change in price. So as companies are looking at changing price of their product, they need to understand whether that change in price is going to increase overall revenue or decrease overall revenue here defined as total revenue. First, let's look at a quick equation and definition. Total revenue equals price times quantity. And in our case, whenever we're looking at a demand curve here, price and quantity, you're simply going to look at total revenue as the definition of an entire area. So if you're looking at this P and this Q, you're looking at this entire area. Area of a rectangle is length times width. And here you have P times Q. Similarly, you have P and Q here. I don't have these marked as P and P prime because it doesn't matter which is the beginning and which is the end. It'd be showing either an increase in price going from here to here or a decrease in price going from here to here. The important thing to understand is that there's an initial price and quantity, which is total revenue. There then is a secondary price and quantity, total revenue. And what we're looking at is degrees of change. So if we looked at a price increase from here to here, well, there are two pieces that we need to consider. The first is per unit price going up, which is defined as the price effect. You're going to have more per unit sold, higher price, depicted in this bluish rectangle. At the same time, though, when you move from here to here, you're going to have the quantity effect, which says you're going to have fewer units sold. Well, how many fewer? From here to here, or defined as that rectangle. So that is the beginning of interpretation, why elasticity matters. Let's move on and delve into it a little bit more. Okay, so we understand price changes. Okay, price change, we see a, a decrease in quantity, increase in price in the case of a price increase. Well, what's the net impact of that? Well, will total revenue go up or down? The answer is, as in so much in economics, it depends. We talked about the price effect and the quantity effect. So price effect says after a price increase per unit price goes up. Quantity effect says after a price increase fewer units are sold. Well, these are called countervailing effects. Price effect meaning higher unit price. Quantity effect meaning fewer quantity sold. So here's in general how we can see whether total revenue is going to go up or go down. If the price effect is greater than the quantity effect, then total revenue is going to go up. Intuitively that makes sense. If I get a higher bump in price than I lose in quantity, my total revenue is going to go up. On the other hand, if my price effect is less than my quantity effect, total revenue is going to go down. Now, Let's introduce price elasticity to understand which is stronger in any given case. Well, here's the quick rule. If you're dealing with an elastic demand, then when price goes up, total revenue will go down. If you have unit elastic demand, when the price goes up, total revenue stays the same. In elastic demand, when the price goes up, total revenue goes up. Now, you see here the opposite effect, so price up, total revenue down, price up, total revenue up. Exactly the opposite happens when you have a price decrease. So, in a case of elastic demand, if you have a decrease in price, total revenue will go up. If you have a decrease in price, total revenue will stay the same. So actually here, unit elasticity is the same. But if you have inelastic demand, as the price goes down, the total revenue will go down. This is sort of a cheat sheet for you. This isn't in the book. Uh, they, I mean, the idea is in there in words, but this is an important cheat sheet, or let's call this a cliff note, for you to have as we're looking at interpretation of price elasticity and what happens when price goes up and price goes down. Let's take a look now at this idea of price elasticity, of demand changing as you move along a demand curve. The main point to get from this, really, is that Whenever you're measuring the price elasticity of demand for a product, you're measuring it at a single point along the demand curve. That's really the, the key to take away from this. Here's a hypothetical demand curve. They didn't state the product. doesn't really matter. 
This, by the way, is from page 473 of the book and I think is a really good depiction of this concept. What they're showing here is that for this particular product, at lower prices, there's relative inelasticity to change in price, meaning, again, inelasticity, relative insensitivity to an increase in price when you measure it against the quantity. Price times quantity is total revenue. You can see here part of the graphical depiction of inelasticity is that as the price goes up, so goes the revenue. Now, because you're measuring it at certain points along the demand curve, we can see that as you get above a certain price, and that happens to be five in this hypothetical example where we're unit elastic, further increases in price start to impact the quantity sold of this product. So if you look at here, you have at a price of over $5, you start getting now elasticity, elasticity, remember, sensitivity to change in price. So as the price goes up, you start seeing an overall reduction in quantity. That's really the idea to get from this combination of charts. Uh, remember, when you measure a good's elasticity, you're really measuring it at a particular point on the curve or, or a section of the demand curve, and you can actually have points of inelasticity and elasticity on either side of unit elasticity. Okay, that's it. Have a great evening, and I will see you in class tomorrow.